resistors in parallel, resistors in series. So our goals for today are, we'll go over how to calculate electric power and we'll learn how to calculate how much money it costs you to run a particular electrical device and then we'll think about resistors in parallel as well as resistors in series. Okay, so electric power. So if you pick up a light bulb, standard incandescent light bulb, which are uh, being outlawed these days, but anyway, it has two numbers on it, 100W and 120 V, and of course the 120 V is 120 volts, and the 100W stands for 100 watts, that's the power dissipated by the bulb, or you might have a 75 watt bulb, or 60 watt, 40 watt, whatever. So most of this uh, energy, in fact, is turned into thermal energy, heat, not light, but the power is proportional to the brightness in general. And resistors are very good at turning electrical energy into thermal energy. We have three equivalent equations for power, and they are these. Power is I delta V, or I squared R, or delta V squared over R, and that comes from this. Powers work over time, and work in uh, the sense of electrical charge is the charge times the voltage, but charge per unit time is current, so that's where the I delta V comes from. And then the other versions come from uh, bringing in Ohm's law with the I delta V. For instance, delta V is IR. Okay, so what do you pay for on your electricity bill? Well, the electric company bills you for the amount of energy you use every month. That's a reasonable thing to bill you. And they measure this in units of kilowatt hours, which actually is an energy unit. Doesn't look like one, but it is. So that means we can convert that to joules, and we'll do that in a minute. Okay, so how much does one of those cost? One kilowatt hour is something on the order of 10 cents, maybe a little bit higher these days, but typically no more than 20 cents. Okay, so how many joules is in one kilowatt hour? So feel free to pause at this point and calculate that yourself. And here's the answer. A kilowatt hour is 1,000 watts times an hour, but an hour is 3,600 seconds. And so you end up with 3.6 million joules for which they charge you 10 to 20 cents. That is crazy. They get 3.6 million joules for that little amount of money. Okay, so if you've got something plugged into the wall and you're using your hair dryer or whatever it is, you can figure out the cost by the power rating in kilowatts times the number of hours it's running times the cost per kilowatt hour and that cost per kilowatt hour again is something on the ballpark of in the ballpark of 10 to 20 cents per kilowatt hour okay so how do you find the power rating well if you pick up your clock radio and turn it over you should see on the bottom the power rating typical number is 5 watts or 0 0.005 kilowatts for some microwave, that might be a thousand watts or a kilowatt, and a hair dryer comes in a box stamp something like, you know, 1750, 800, 1900 watts. So 1.8 kilowatts is not unreasonable. Okay, so if you've got your clock radio running 24 hours a day, it doesn't actually cost you a lot because the power rating in kilowatts is not that much. Okay, so your microwave draws much, much more power, but of course it's not on 24 hours a day. So you can figure out, you know, what costs you the most to run in your house. Okay, that brings us to resistors in parallel. So when we have resistors in parallel, we're giving the current multiple paths from which to choose from. The potential difference across two or three or five resistors in parallel is the same, and the currents split up, but they add together to be the total that was coming in and leaving. Okay, so here's a pretty straightforward picture of uh, two resistors in parallel. They're connected to a battery. The battery is a voltage V. And we say, well, let's try and fool the battery and replace our two resistors by a single equivalent resistor. And we'll fool the battery if it sends out the same amount of current in each case. Okay, so what we have here is the fact that the current that comes out of the battery splits. Some goes through resistor 1, some goes through resistor 2, so I is I1 plus I2. But then we can apply uh, Ohm's law to the whole circuit, 
So that total current circuit I is the battery voltage over the equivalent resistance of the circuit, and I1 is V over R1, and I2 is V over R2. Note that the potential differences across each resistor are equal to the battery voltage, because there's, uh, they're both directly tied to the positive terminal and both directly tied at the other end to the negative terminal. Okay, so the Vs are all the same, so we can cancel out the Vs, and we just get 1 over REQ is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. But what if we have 3 resistors, or 5 resistors, or 17 resistors in parallel? Then here's our general expression. 1 over the equivalent resistance is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus etc, etc. Okay, here's a little animation of resistors in parallel. So we simply have a battery here at the bottom left, and then some wires, they're kind of brownish. And the resistor here is the thing which is darker brown with two black stripes and a yellow stripe. And there's a gold stripe in there too. So now we're going to add an identical resistor in parallel with that one and see what happens. And note that no current throw, flows through the, uh, the other one we add until there's a complete circuit path for the electrons to move through. Okay, so now what you should see is that the, because these resistors are identical, the current divides equally between them. Okay, and an analogy is with ski trails. Okay, so this is exactly the same movie, but now I want you to really focus on what's going on with the battery. So pay attention to how fast the chargers are moving through the battery and the top wire. And see if you can see any change in that when we've got current flowing through the second ski trail or second resistor. Okay, what you should notice is that now the charges are moving a lot faster through the battery and up through that top wire. Okay, because you've given them more options to choose from. So actually the overall resistance of your circuit has decreased even though you added a resistor. Seems kind of counterintuitive, but it's true. Okay, here's how things work in series. So when things are in series, it's like sort of a chain of Christmas light bulbs and the current passes through one, one resistor and then goes on to pass through the next one and if there's more than one it just keeps going down the chain. Okay, again we're going to fool our battery by replacing our two different resistors by one equivalent resistance, our EQ, and we need the battery to send out the same amount of current and it can only do that if we have uh, V1 plus V2 equals the battery voltage. So we got Using Ohm's law, we can replace the uh, V by IREQ, and that's also equal to the voltage across resistor 1 plus the voltage across resistor 2, which is IR1 plus IR2. But it's the same current everywhere in the series circuit. That's very important. At every point in the series circuit, the current is the same. So all those currents are the same. They drop out of the equation. And we've got a very general equation. And with two resistors, it's just R1 plus R2 is the equivalent resistance, but if you have 17, then you just have 17 things added together. So add up all the individual resistors, resistances of the resistors. Okay, so here's another animation. So we started with exactly the same starting point as before. A single resistor and a single battery and a few wires to make the connections. Now to add our resistor in series, note that you have to break the circuit. So we're going to take out a wire and replace it by a resistor, uh, complete the circuit, and then the charges will flow. Okay, and you should have noticed a, quite a significant difference between the current to the rate at which the charges are flowing and um, wh when we made that change. Okay, so if you think of this as a ski trail, so imagine the skiers going up the mountain, carried up by the chairlift, which is the battery, and they're flowing through some uh, nice big wide path at the top, and flowing down through that trail, which is the resistor. Now we're actually going to build sort of another harder trail here. Instead of a nice wide path, we're going to add moguls or make it a lot more difficult. And so the skiers don't come down the mountain nearly as quickly, because you've really made it harder to come down. And so there's a feedback mechanism, and the chairlift shouldn't run as fast, so that 
the skiers don't pile up at the top. Well, the same thing happens in circuits. Okay, so the charges are not going to flow uh, nearly as quickly around that circuit when you add resistance. So with more resistance, the charges do not flow as fast. Okay, that is our introduction to circuits. No, it's not. It's our resistor in series and parallel video.